see, are you seeing me? I'm not seeing you. Uh, well, that's what I need you to do is to see me. Oh, uh, hey. How are you? I'm good. How are you? Uh, morning time. I'm realizing my speaker on my computer is fritzing out here. So that's being dealt with later. Hello. I hear you. Believe me, technology, um, we're wearing it out right now with all the remote stuff. <laughs> Where are you located? So I'm in New England. <laughs> I've heard of it. Yeah, <laughs> it's a place. It exists. <laughs> yeah. Yeah, so how's California? Uh, it's gloomy today, actually. Yeah, same. Same. Yeah, it's kind of gray here, I'll show you. Yeah. Indeed. Yeah, a bit. A bit drab. For California. Yeah. That's kind of typical of what we call June bloom. Oh, yeah, yeah. I used to kind of be stationed in San Jose during Silicon Valley time. So, ah, okay. Yeah, yeah, back in the day. <laughs> yeah. So, so, thank you so much for doing this. Um, of course. Um, we're, you know, obviously we're trying to um, launch quite a bit of um, interviewing time with many different types of people that uh, the fans of Collectors Maze would be interested in. And you just have a crazy extensive <laughs> career. <laughs> I think, yes, I've been very, very blessed to have a very extensive career, for sure. Yeah, yeah. I mean, um, it's as long as um, my kids are old, so that's pretty <laughs> impressive. <laughs> And twice as long as my kids are old. <laughs> so. uh, yeah, yes, yes. So you've got that going too. Yeah. Um, so I'll just I'll just kind of go back through some of our our questions um, and just try to get a little bit of backdrop. I just you know I I believe you're originally from Maryland. Your family. Uh, yeah. Well, yeah. It's funny because they they. Uh, Baltimore lists me on their uh, you know famous actors from Baltimore. Well, way to go. Uh, I, big, I don't think I've ever really been to Baltimore. I was just born there. <laughs> um, okay. And I, I moved when I, I think I was one, or even oh. less than one when I moved to Baltimore. So I don't have deep roots in the, the Baltimore. Um, yeah. Although I do name, whenever I coach my kids' little league team, I do name them the Orioles just because I like orange and black. Oh, so, that's funny. That's a riot. Yeah. So that's your little connection you're going to keep with Baltimore. But yeah. so, so, so do you you ended up in California then right away? No, uh, I born in Baltimore. Then we moved to New Orleans. Oh. Then we moved from New Orleans to La Cunada, which is a suburb of California, Los Angeles. Then we moved from La Cunada to Hong Kong, and then we moved from Hong Kong to Northern California. So wow. actually, yes. So, so I, is that military or? Um, your dad was like coaching or something, wasn't he? No, that no, was my grandfather. Uh, <laughs> um, yeah, my uh, let's just say he uh, intelligence maybe, but I don't want to. He's no longer. Oh, there. okay, okay, all right. That would so, be my guess, probably. Yeah. So okay. So then you were you were fairly exposed from day one to California culture acting. Um, so so not everybody who lives in California necessarily goes into acting. So what took you there? Um, you know, I, I, I started as a child actor and oh. then, um, but mostly doing theater and then uh, love theater. Um, wanted to actually, and spent, I still, still do, and spent a great deal of time in New York as well, back and forth between the two of them. Uh, I'm actually on a series in New York at the moment. Um, but then... Uh, it's called Godfather of Harlem. Yes, yes, yes. yes. Um, so then uh, pretty much just when I was a kid, just started loving it. Ended up going to USC uh, to the theater school there. Yes. And uh, pretty much started working right away, you know. And uh, Yeah, always, you did, actually. It worked. So I never really did anything else. And then I write a lot as well with my wife and sisters. And I'm teaching too. So I got you are teaching. Okay, great. Because so you had a great teacher. Uh, I have a, had a couple. Yes, yeah. amazing teachers. Uh, yeah. Mary Moss and Peggy Fury would be my. Yeah. Teacher. Exactly. And major major um, colleagues in. Yeah. Yeah, we've all done very well. That is that is for sure. 
That's excellent. So you've maintained a lot of those relationships over the years then. Uh, yeah, I'm in contact with a lot of... Um, yeah. And we, we tend to, I don't know, we tend to work together a lot over the these 40 years, so... Yes, I've seen that. <laughs> work so, again and again together. So Emilio Estevez... Um, talking to him yesterday yes yeah that's excellent um so young guns so that would be a really popular one everybody would know um mm -hmm. i think my standout for you is um is is definitely jenny's nasty old boyfriend <laughs> okay. the wesley's yeah i would say he's definitely the most iconic role i've played in an iconic film for sure so incredibly memorable that's for sure is that um is that so which one out of out of all of your okay so i'm looking and it's like 150 something i can't even possibly list all of these but right. i do i do appreciate and enjoy a lot of the things that you're doing currently um the godfather of harlem right see that's and then charmed um i see dc legend of tomorrow which are our, our yeah your wheelhouse fans will be very interested in. yes that is that is de those are definitely ones that that come up whenever I do comic cons and things. Right, the man in the man in the high castle. I, so. I yeah. love. Yes, exactly. It's awesome. Um, and then of course, you know, it just seems like a lot of series. So I see you revisiting um, like CSI, NCIS, that sort of thing a lot. Um, are those roles that those are? <laughs> I call them. I call them the initial shows. Uh, I I seem to have been on all of the initial shows. That are, yes. Yes. Yeah. And then previous to that, they, you, you've got some that were not quite so heavy. Right. <laughs> Monk. <laughs> yeah. Monk was fun, actually. I played, a, uh, I played a homeless guy who, uh, there was a group of homeless, three of us, and, um, oh. and Mike invited us, invited us for Thanksgiving. It was a Thanksgiving. You make the gravy. Yeah, exactly. We <laughs> made the gravy. <laughs> That's excellent. Oh yeah. no. So see this is this is what I find really super interesting because it yeah. seems like in any moment you're in, um characteristics of you change considerably. Right. Yeah. So it's almost hard to pin you down. Yeah. <laughs> that, that's a blessing and a curse, but yes, for sure. Um <laughs> What's the blessing uh, part? The blessing part is that I get I work all the time and nobody's ever you know, they can't really pin me as a specific type because i can right. do it also you're right uh, you're not categorized right yeah uh, so that's the blessing and then uh, the curse sometimes is that then they don't know how to you know in a town sometimes that's a little narrow-minded they go well i don't know what he is so um, oh well you're you're vastly talented i believe for um the variety of roles that you've been able to play um I, it's interesting because we were talking. I was, I was, um, I do a little, uh, a little Zoom uh, talk show thing during the pandemic here on Friday nights called the Working Actors Journey, and uh, I invite my colleagues and friends on to just sit around. You know, young actors come and watch, and we just sit around and talk about our journeys in the business. And, and um, Dermot Mulroney and I were talking about that, and he. Uh, we're two different actors and that there's always whenever Dermot works there's always a little bit of Dermot in everything mm -hmm. he does he has this very kind of lovable affable and he plays intense guys too but when he he, he has a certain affable charm about him yeah um, which just serves him well and uh I I tended uh, he came from a different acting teacher a different philosophy a guy named Roy London um and uh I came from the school of that you create a character and you create the voice. You create, and that's, it's interesting. I, I seem, I think that's a reason why le recently I've been playing a lot of real people, a lot of like, like people in history, like in Midway, I'm playing director John Ford and then yes. Godfather Harlem, Kenny O'Donnell is actually a guy. So, um, Oh, okay. Yeah. Um, and so, and what is this short that's coming up? What is it? Uh, yeah, um, Little May, what is that? Um, yeah, it was a favor for some young director. Actually, it was, I don't even know. Um, you know Spencer Garrett is? Anyway, Spencer Garrett was supposed to be in this. Oh, like this. 
Yes. <laughs> he, he would, if you go ahead and saw, Google him, you go, oh, yeah, that guy. Oh, yeah. Another, <laughs> another one of us. That guy, guys. Um, he was supposed to do it. And then uh, he got stuck up in Vancouver, I believe, uh, shooting Supergirl or something. Oh, oh okay. Well, that's and, rough. Uh, so I, I, it was like two days. I took, I play a divorce attorney or something. I, it was a favor, basically. Oh, nice. <laughs> yeah. nice. Well, at least there's a little work still going on yeah. in 2020. Cause yeah, we'll see. Yeah, it's difficult. Uh, <laughs> tell me. Um, so I guess I mean we've kind of touched on it, but are there any specific are there any specific standout roles for you that meant something? Like I, I, I um, you see it's yeah. kind of nebulous. You just take that. Yeah. Um, well, obviously Forrest Gump, which we talked about. Mm. Um, I love the other. I, I did I'm trying to figure out how many movies I did. Robert Zemeckis. One, two, three. Oh yeah, you've done several for him. <laughs> yeah, um, I would say Contact was an amazing experience. Yeah, yeah. Um, working with Jodie Foster was amazing. Um, same director. Yeah. Gump, um, and we kind of went all over the world shooting that movie, so that was a, a great experience. Uh, Young Guns, you mentioned. Yeah. Um, Man in High Castle was certainly, I love David Semmel, the guy who directed Pilot, still a dear friend. Yeah. Um, what are the ones stand out? I had a great time shooting Midway last year. That was, you know, that was fun. Uh, interesting director. Uh, and then, you know, television wise, um, I enjoyed playing, uh, enjoyed is a difficult word to use. I had a good experience playing, I played a serial killer on Criminal Minds, which yes. was, yes, you did. Um, that was an interesting journey. Uh, I just, the part was interesting. And then, um, that's an interesting cast also. That's uh, yeah, yeah. yeah. Um, it was an interesting cast. Um, and, you know, my, my collaborations with Emilio have been joyful. My, you know, I, I'd say Apollo 13 had, had a big impact on, on my life in, in a way that the shooting of it was certainly interesting, but um, because we did a lot of, we, we did it, we did basically two weeks of space school where we learned how to, we just went every day and we reenacted the flight in, in the, reenacted it in the built. Wow. set on the universe a lot and then um i would say th there's the great thing about apollo 13 was uh just this ensemble of, of 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 actors that have continued to be good friends you know we call ourselves the girls of apollo 13 because there are no girls in apollo 13 and <laughs> like one one or two wives right. Right? <laughs> right. um and no and we're still all you know, so Xander Berkeley to Ed Harris to, you know. Ed Harris, yeah. Clint Howard, mm. and, you know, there's, there's just a plethora of people in there who are still, who are still pals. So you mentioned, you mentioned your Comic-Con connection. Yes, yes. Explain that. Uh, I do them rarely, occasionally. Um, I, I don't know. I, 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 I. I, I, they keep inviting me to come to the Star Trek convention in uh, in Las Vegas. Uh, I've never done that one. Oh. Um, I hear that that one is quite crazy. Yeah. Uh, I just did one right before the pandemic somewhere down in almost near the Mexican border. I can't remember what the name of the town was. Uh, a big lot, thousands of people came out. And wow. then um, I've do, do, done a couple around here. You know, it's not... It's always finding the right representative for those, and uh, I don't seem to necessarily have found that yet. So. Oh, okay. Well, you know, you're floundering around in your 40-year career, so. Yeah, I'm doing just fine. <laughs> <laughs> so, so, um, and and so you mentioned I I had seen and I did a little bit more research, but I saw that my kids, of course, in the 90s, were all over you for the um. Fern Gully because that's just one of their favorite things. So. Yeah, that that was a big one. There was two of those. There's another one that I get so much fan letter from, and I never thought anybody would ever see it. And it was again a favor I did for a director, Greg Berman. Um, there was a thing called Brink on the Disney Channel. It was okay. A, the rollerblading movie that has a okay. cult following. 
Oh, I bet it does. Oh, yeah. Well, I'm a big roller derby cult follower, so well, it's kind of a get that. Kind of roller derby. It was kind of when roller blading, kind of like what skating is now, like with ramps and verts and all that. Right. Stuff. Right. Awesome. I'm kind of like a karate kid of rollerblading. And so, did I see that you've also done video games? I do. Yeah, occasionally. Okay. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> a lot of yelling and screaming usually. Usually play a lot of, you know, a lot of military guys because I have a deep voice. So. Yes. <laughs> yes. <laughs> and actually, I don't think I ever recognized you necessarily for your voice, but um. Okay. I'm starting to put it together with yeah, a lot. I, of... I do a lot of voiceover. Yeah. <laughs> so I'm, the, I'm the voice of a lot of products that you probably buy. <laughs> and you've done commercials. I have. Yeah, yeah. back in the back in the uh, back in the '90s, mostly back. Oh. Then, was, uh, I did. I guess I did do one race. I did the Geico thing at the crossing of the Delaware, whatever that thing was. George Washington crossing. Oh, yeah. <laughs> yeah, I was the grumpy guy in the car um, that he was getting in front of. Uh, but yeah, back in the 90s, uh, there was a, a director named Joe Pitka and uh, P Y T K A. And he was probably the the number he was the you know, he was the number one commercial director in, in the business. And okay. Huge guy. And I would. Uh, he had what he called his little box, his little shoe box. And he would just, I, I would work for him a couple of times a month. There would be a time in the nineties where I'd have 10, 15 commercials running at a time. Wow. <laughs> so, wow. Yeah. Um, so I'd only, and I'd only really seen just a few. So I'm going to have to look up the rest. That's pretty awesome. <laughs> I've never seen them. <laughs> <laughs> I remember yeah, do, you the watch your, do you watch your own movies? I remember the Mountain Dew ones, and I remember the Levi's ones as well. Oh, there you go. Okay. Yeah. Yeah. Um, do I watch my own movies? Yes. Usually. Yeah. Yeah, movies for sure. Do your uh, kids watch them? Uh, they do. They've seen most of the things I've been in. Um, they came to the premiere of Midway, so... And then... Oh, um, yes. good. And then when I did a miniseries called Texas Rising uh, for 10 months, and in cartel Mexico, literally El Chapo's hometown. Wow. And, um, again, that was a memorable, like, because it was like Bill Paxton and a lot of my old, old friends. Yes, yes. John Shack and Jeffrey D. Morgan. Um, old friends. But um, so to answer your question, uh, I don't, I don't, I can't say that I've seen all of the initial shows we talked about. I don't, I don't necessarily watch myself on episodic television because I can't know it's, it's a little funny now I remember Young Guns being just so fantastic when I was younger and then I go back and I watch it and I'm like eh, eh, mm -hmm. okay it's cool <laughs> but well, it still seems to have younger, a following oh yeah when you were younger that was the target audience so yes like, yes definitely. teenage boys and teenage girls <laughs> yes we were almost teenagers ourselves so so, and then you mentioned you screenwrite, of course, too. I do. You got this screenplay mm -hmm. thing going on uh, with your wife, Marsha. Um, you know, right now, she is actually writing something on her own. Um, I'm, you know, dramaturging it with her because that's just what. Um, but it's a very, uh, a very cool female-driven piece that's kind of an action chick. Uh, it's, it's really gritty. It's based on an ex con it's based on an Argentinian film that was a male actor that was about an ex-con who comes out to kind of try to reunite with the, the daughter he never knew and then finds his way back into crime, unfortunately. Um, but she flipped it and she's actually writing it as a female woman, a, an ex-con, a, a woman who gets out of prison. Awesome. To connect with her daughter. And, uh, Excellent. Yeah, it's really good. So, um, so I see that you've written screenplays for, it looks like all the studios. Yes. <laughs> um, True. Um, I was, I was watching what, what's, and then what would be, what would be something that our viewers would, would know? Yeah, it's, it's interesting. We, 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 there's a huge industry of writers that we don't, we write all the time we get hired to rewrite all the time um and then technically they're not our movies so we the, on the rewrites 
Um, oh, okay. So uh, the, uh, my favorite writing experience, uh, which was we wrote a screenplay for Robert Cowan, who, uh, who wrote Chinatown, um, probably the number one screenplay writer ever. Um, but he hired us to write a, a movie based on a, a book um, called 17 Stone Angels. So um, your, your audience, no, we, we're, we're pretty deep and pretty dark and pretty heavy and pretty adult. Um, we're known for writing very dark. So Interesting. Yeah. Um, yeah. Okay. <laughs> so yeah. pretty dark. Um, mm -hmm. So these are, um, so, so do you they're have mostly, they're mostly political thrillers, heavy crime, and then very, uh, very dysfunctional characters, you know, almost kind of Ozarky kind of feel. Oh, nice. Um, and then uh, we also wrote a, we wrote an, a, a bio, an autobiography, a, a true story of a woman named Gloria Trevi, who was a nod for your audience. She was a huge Madonna. In the 90s, she was the biggest pop star in all of Latin America. She's still around, but she uh, she got involved in, a, in a sex crimes and having up roles and very, again, very dark. Hey, <laughs> Loring. So, um, okay, so <clears throat> what do you have? I, I see that you're doing the Harlem. So what do you have coming up as other major projects that you're working on? Um, none of us have any. Because <laughs> yeah. we don't know if ever we're going to get back to work. Um, Godfather Harlem is definitely, it's ready to go. Um, but, yeah. I'm actually having lunch with the, the readers on Saturday. Um, so it it will be the first probably, it's just a matter of where we're going to shoot it. That's becoming a big tripping point. Um, right. And uh, then from there it will be... I know Roland Emmerich, who, uh, who who I did Midway with, has a movie that he's starting up in the spring called Moonshot. Hopefully, I'll do something in that, uh, but I don't know if it's going to start in the spring now because obviously, uh, right? That'll probably be shooting in Montreal. But oh yeah. I don't know what's happening in Montreal. So. Okay. Yeah. Yeah, I haven't seen any statistics from no. there. <laughs> so yeah, probably. Yeah, they actually have a. <laughs> they actually have a leader of their country who actually knows how to lead. So, not, so, yeah, not to get political. Shut down. <laughs> okay. So, um, and then I guess I just have, you know, if you, you've acted, you've, you've had this um, wonderful career. Your kids mm -hmm. are still fairly young, so. 15 and 11. Yeah, so, so um, what, what do you see? in your next like 10 years or is there another is there another role or another aspect of your um <clears throat> you know it's interesting i i would say i know i'll work just because i'm getting to that age now where i'm heading in probably the suit portion of my career where it seems to be every character i play wears a suit of some sort um to be honest it's kind of sad to say that I have a feeling for the next, Dermot and I were talking about this actually, that for the next five years, all we're gonna play are just really bad white dudes in suits. We're going to be the bounce back for every anti-Donald Trump conspiracy movie made. Lug them in. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> I will uh, probably you know, be playing Jeff Flake. Jeff Blake is Jeff Flake. Um, <laughs> Yeah, I think I think that that's probably the journey that's going to take um, is, and rightfully so. I mean, I, I think you're going to see a lot of civil rights movies and a lot of uh, you know political corruption movies. <laughs> right, 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 right. Yeah. Well, that's I mean, obviously that's good foresight. Um, the culture is definitely going to be reflected there. So for sure. Um, so. So you, it, that's great. You already know the wardrobe you'll be donning for the next exactly. year. Exactly. Just keep getting the right suits. Um, but it does seem that as actors get older, um, it seems uh, it, it does seem like they explore some interesting roles that they didn't previously ever entertain, and think, they're com more comfortable. 
with yeah i i would say and that's just by experience I, I, you know i would say i'm my acting work right now is the best it's ever been but that's just because and that's why i'm teaching just to get back a little bit because um i think some of the craft of acting is being lost um when i work with younger actors uh they're not quite as focused or as trained or as knowledgeable as they were when I was the younger actor working with older actors. Um, so my mission is to actually find some younger actors and, and, and hand down the training that I got. Um, and we've lost so, so many great actors yeah. that really knew their skill and their craft. Yeah. So. And some, you know, like one of my, my dear friends, Philip Seymour Hoffman, we've also lost some of them oh. way, too, way too young. So. Yes. Absolutely, absolutely. Um, so, we, so I'm I'm very encouraged that you're carrying that on, that you've taken up that torch, um, and especially during the pandemic when there's yeah. an awful lot of opportunity, and I, it's been real encouraging to see so many actors step in and and start yeah. giving um, their craft. To yeah, I, the the thing I mentioned to you, the the Friday night thing, the working actors' journey. Yes. Um, you know, we I do that for for charity. I give donations to the to the sag after foundation for COVID relief and then i teach an online zoom class that just basically is a, a extension of the method um and teach exercises and things like that um i'm actually starting i was doing it as an artist in residence at one place and just decided that i'm just going to do my own thing starting in july so that will be launching in july Excellent. Yeah, online, but online. Uh, <laughs> online. It's a place I was artist in residency. They're actually opening their doors to try to teach in their space. And I said, I am not getting into a small room. <laughs> That's it, yeah. With Twenty seven people that are not social distancing in a room that has not great ventilation. That's just not gonna happen. So. Right, right. No, yeah. absolutely. No, and, and with today's technology, why should it really? Right. Um, so yeah. Oh, so is there anything else you want to share with us, I suppose? Because at this point, I'm just super psyched about everything that you're um, No, I'm, I'm good. Thanks for uh, say hello to your, your audience base, your peeps. Um, Certainly you know, well. Burn Gully, for sure, was a great experience working with Robin is insane. Um, Danny, <laughs> Danny Pastorelli, another one we lost too soon. Another um, one. Yes. So that's um, and uh, keep on keep on and they can follow me, you know, find me on social media. I, mean, I have a lot of accounts. Absolutely. Um, we'll definitely be promoting all of what you're doing. We really sure. appreciate it. Cool. Um, you stay safe, stay healthy. Well, I have no other choice. I have two kids. So. That's awesome. <laughs> you too. It's a pleasure meeting you. You right. too. Take care. Take care.